Hey, this is Professor Immler, and I wanted to address something that came up in a lot of discussion threads uh, from a previous unit. Sorry, I haven't had a chance to get to this yet, but um, I've been dealing with midterms, writing them, grading them, uh, working on some papers, um, etc. So my apologies for that. But uh, one issue that, that constantly came up was uh, the euphythro and uh, the euphythro dilemma. So that is a... It comes from a dialogue that Plato writes, and he uses the mouthpiece of Socrates, his mentor, um, and he examines the nature of uh, religion and morality. And so a lot of people will say, well, uh, you know, classic divine command theory, we just do what God says. And, and this makes a certain kind of sense, right? If the God or God's whatever you want to call the divine, if that thing or collection of things created uh, reality, kind of like writing a board game, then they get to make up the rules. And if those rules include morality, then it would seem to be the case that um, we just go off of what the divine says is right and wrong. And then we say, why? Is a given thing right or wrong? It's because the gods say so, right? And then there's a question of how is that communicated to us? It has to be through revelation. And uh, this is why. And see if I have this up here. Um, it has to be through uh, revelation, right? So this is what I'm saying uh, right here. Um, it has to be communication from the divine to humans uh, because we don't get to say what God is like in divine command theory. God could be rational, could be consistent, or God could be inconsistent, could be irrational, uh, but we don't get to say, right? So it, in divine command theory, we are creations of the divine, and so we um, don't get to say what the divine is like. A car, you know, has can't say anything about the car factory. It just is a product of that factory. Um, and that's the relationship between the two. So um, we cannot rely on our thinking to discover the moral aspect of the world in divine command theory. Instead, uh, we have to rely upon revelation, uh, communication from the divine to tell us, right? Um, so with that, right, if, if we have to rely upon revelation, um, then, you know, one question that comes up is, um, what and why do the gods love what, what the gods love is, is how it's phrased in the Euphythro. We might say, why does God choose what is right and wrong? Kind of in a monotheistic, uh, context, which is closer to what most divine command theorists are today. And so another way of stating this is, do the gods have reasons for selecting what is right and what is wrong? Um, Plato phrases this somewhat awkwardly whenever uh, he writes and has Socrates saying, "Okay, why, why is a you know why is a given thing being carried? Is it because it's it's worthy of being carried, and that's why I have chosen to carry this, or is it just because it is?" being carried? Is that the reason why it is carried? Uh, and so, you know, we might, you might say, wow, what, who cares? What does that mean? What does that matter? You might have a host of questions. It's, it, it is awkwardly phrased. But another way of saying it is, you know, why do the gods love what they love? Uh, that's really what he's trying to get at. And um, let's see. And so we have two options, right? Uh, do the gods have reason for selecting what is right and what is wrong? If they do or it does have reasons for selecting what is right and wrong, then think about that. We, we don't have to look to the gods themselves, right? We don't have to rely upon revelation in order to tell us what is right and what is wrong. Uh, I phrase that awkwardly, what's right and what's wrong, right? So we can just use the same reasoning that the gods used. We can use that too. 
And so we don't have to rely upon revelation itself in order to figure out what's right and wrong. And we can double check what a given um, candidate of revelation says about morality, right? So like think about uh, the Christian and Hebrew Bibles. Um, they both share the book of Deuteronomy. In that book, God expressly says, hey, go genocide these people. Um, and then take their land. Now, uh, to a lot of people, they would you know, think about that and say, hey, wait, there's kind of a problem there. We don't think that genocide is, is okay. But if divine command theory is right, God gets to say whatever God wants. And if God did say that, the way that, um, and it is a direct communication from God, well, then the genocide of the Canaanites or certain particular tribes of Canaanites uh, and then the taking of their land is the right thing for them to do. Doesn't mean it necessarily is universal, because again, it would have to be whether the divine wants it to be universal or not. Um, but that would be morally binding. But uh, people who say that there are reasons for selecting what's right and what's wrong, well, then we appeal to reason and we say, okay, is the genocide of this group appropriate in this circumstance and you know if the answer is no then then no if the answer is yes well you have to deal with that but the the key thing there is there's a reason to to think given things um and so we can use that reason now the other option is no right and so if no then there is no rational plan for choosing what is right and what is wrong if that's the case right if something is not rational, then it has to be, and we can use various labels that highlight these things. It, it can be chaotic, irrational, but think about that implication, right? There is no rhyme or reason to what's right and what's wrong. Um, and if there's no rhyme or reason, then another way of saying that is it's randomly selected, right? And if it's not randomly selected, there has to be a process or reason, and then we're back to the yes answer. So um, if it's no, that's really worrisome. Um, because what if you're the, the Canaanites, right? What if God says it's okay to harm you or it's, it's okay to harm me? Um, if divine command theory is right and God does say that, um, then it's right to harm you, or it's right to harm these people, or right, or or and or. Um, you can think of all kinds of cases. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I I could go on and on here, but you know, for the sake of the video, we'll we'll try to keep this short. So just just think about that. Um, it doesn't seem to be the case if there is a morality that it is random. There seems like there ought to be a a some sort of discernible pattern to it. Um, now, people use this type of argument, uh, the Euphythro dilemma, uh, to claim or demonstrate that religion cannot itself be the basis of morality um, because it would then have to be fundamentally irrational. Um, and divine command theorists don't really have an answer to this, at least one that is uh, seems to be satisfactory. You'll find... Uh, people, I think, um, within the Christian tradition, William Lane, I'm sorry, William Lane Craig uh, worked specifically on the Deuteronomy 20 and maybe seven passages and tries to come up with a method of making that acceptable. But then, you know, some people might say, well, he's, he's you know, going back to the yes instead of the no. Um, that's the, the only person I really know who tries to work on this problem off the top of my head. Um, but a lot of people use this line of argumentation, and it's really hard to, to get around that religion itself cannot be the basis of morality, that um, it doesn't seem to be possible that the divine um, is able to just say what is right and what is wrong without any kind of reason. And again, notice we can use reason too if that's the case, that there is a reason behind morality. Now, what I want to stress here is this is not, let me get this zooming right, this is not the only religious option. 
um, there's lots of uh, religious points of view about morality that don't um, rely upon divine command theory. Natural law theory is one of them. Um, and, and the other thing to note here is that, uh, how do I say this? Morality, oh, I'm sorry, um, we don't have to throw out revelation. It might be possible that the God or the gods are rational, has set up morality, um, and we can access that, we can figure that out on our own without having to, without you know needing revelation. But that doesn't mean that the gods can't also talk to us, um, can't also kind of fill us in or give us some hints uh, regarding morality, just that we can double check what people say is what the gods say. So it, it gives us a method of kind of verification, at least along religion, I'm sorry, uh, at least along morality, moral lines. Um, so anyway, that kind of in a 11 minute nutshell is the Euphythro dilemma and how it really um, undermines divine command theory. But that doesn't mean that you can't be religious and have your religion be the basis of your morality. There's just you have to think about it in a different way or find different groundings or allow for maybe some modifications. So anyway, so that's that's you, Fythro. I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you still have questions, let me know, and I will be happy to engage you on those. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.